All right, with Storybook configured, we can actually go ahead and start building out our first component, uh, which is actually going to be a button component. So going to our text editor, uh, what I'm going to do is create a new directory in here. I'm going to call this components. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a button.js. All right, and rather than building out an entire component to start, all I'm going to do uh, is basically the most basic API. The way you're going to import this is going to be import button from, get the path right, button. So something like this. So all I'm going to do is say export const button is equal to a function that returns null. And I like to do it this way just so I can start building out the API of my component before I actually start building said component. So with that done, what I'm going to do now as a child to the app directory, I'm also going to create a new directory called stories. And inside of stories, I'm going to create a button.stories.js. So in here is where we're actually going to start defining our stories. A few things we're going to have to do. Uh, first, import React because we are using JSX in this file. I'm also going to have to import stories of from at storybook forward slash react native, which is a dependency that was automatically added for us when we initialized it. I'm also going to import the action from at storybook forward slash add on actions. And then we need to actually import our button component from, if we look at our directory structure, we go up one over and then down one. So we can do dot dot forward slash components forward slash button. So here is how we actually start defining these stories. So we'll say stories of button. So the stories of the button uh, component, that's basically just the name of this. And that'll make it show up in the actual storybook configuration. Uh, we'll then want to give it uh, basically all the different stories. So we can say dot add, I like to do a default one. Uh, just what is this going to look like with kind of the required props of that? So we can go ahead and say button. Okay, so what props is a button going to have? A button's going to have an on press prop of some kind. And then we also need to pass text to it. And we could do text like this, um, but what we're going to do is actually pass it as a child. So I'll go ahead and say button. And inside of this button, we'll say press me. So with this on press, we want to simulate and test and see that our button's actually being pressed. And that's where this action comes in. So we can say action. And I'm just going to say tapped default. So if I save this and then I go back to my storybook server, refresh it, we can see nothing showing up. And that's because we haven't told uh, our storybook server where to find this button stories from. So what we have to do now is go into our app forward slash storybook forward slash index.js. And here we had this require forward slash dot forward slash stories. We need to do a require uh, dot dot forward slash app stories button dot stories. So if I save this now, go back to our storybook and we can see here it's actually showing up now. Uh, so that's looking good. Uh, that means we're actually seeing this story that we just put together and now we can start uh, actually building out this component. All right, and I am going to move a bit fast through actually building this component, um, but I will explain as I go. So a few things I need to import are React. I'm also going to import from React Native, touchable opacity, text, and then the style sheet. Uh, I'm also going to import colors from dot dot forward slash config colors. And you may be asking, where's that file coming from? Uh, well, I haven't created it quite yet. Let's go ahead and do that now with a few default colors for this little sample application we're putting together. So again, this is going to be a child to the app directory. It's going to, going to say config, and then I'll go ahead and say colors.js. And then in here, we'll, we've got this export default. We've got a primary color, border color, white, gray, air, and success, all things that we'll use uh, throughout the series of this guide. Okay, so thinking back, or rather just looking back at this story, we know we've got an on-press prop, and then we've got this chi or children prop. So what we can do is actually go in here and say we'll have an on-press 
we'll default this to just an empty function. And then we'll also access the children and we'll default that to uh, just an empty string. So here we can go ahead and say, uh, well, actually we don't need a return. So all we can say here is touchable opacity. We'll take that on press. That's going to equal on press. Then we'll pass text in, which will take children. So now if I save this, uh, we can actually see this press me is showing up. We can press it. If we look at the actual uh, storybook server here, we can see whenever we press this, we're seeing that this action is being logged in here with uh, any information that's being passed to it. And then with this kind of the basis set up here, we can start really building on top of this. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually get this button uh, to be centered or a little bit easier to see rather than sitting right at the top. So what I'll do is actually inside of my stories directory here, I'm going to create a new file called decorators.js. And then in here, I'm going to import React, going to import view. These are just components that basically decorate our components that we're displaying so that we can more easily see them and better represent uh, the actual environment they'll be working in. So all I'm going to say here is export const uh, buffer view. And what I want to do is basically just uh, give this view or whatever component we're working on a bit of extra breathing room uh, from the sides of the screen. So give it a style of flex one, a margin vertical of 40, and then margin horizontal of 20. And then to actually render that story, uh, this buffer view is going to take a story function as an argument, and I'll just go ahead and call that function uh, within the body. So now going back to our stories, we can actually go ahead and import this buffer view from dot forward slash decorators. And then in our stories um, above this dot add, we can go ahead and say dot add decorator. And then we can just go ahead and pass that buffer view in here. So now if we save this, we can see we've just got a bit more breathing room at the top. Okay, so now we can start really building out this component. Um, and even before I think we do this, let's think about the button that we want. Basically what I'm envisioning here is we're going to have a button with a solid background color, and then we can also have almost like an inverse version of that where the background is transparent and we've got an outline. So uh, we could actually go ahead and add this other story in here so we can just go ahead and start building this out as we go. So basically what you can do here with these stories is add on different conditions, different cases, uh, different styles, different props and inputs uh, to go ahead and easily test and view these. And in addition to actually making it easier to build out a component, it's great for your future self or another developer who joins the project. They can just go ahead, easily look at the stories of a button, see the available props, see how to use it. And it just makes working with these that much easier. Uh, than kind of having to guess and check as you go or dive through a complex code base uh, to figure out exactly how to use it. Okay, with all that said, what we want to do now is actually add a name for this. So I'm just going to say this is the outline version. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this previous one. And everything's going to stay the same. I'm just going to change tap default to tapped outline. And then I'm going to add a new prop on here called outline, uh, which is just going to be a Boolean. Okay, cool. So if we look back at the stories, we can see we've got this button, we've got outline. For now, they look the same, but we can use this as a, a test case uh, going forward to check everything. So now we can actually go ahead and start knocking out this uh, styling. So first thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead, pull out this render so that we can do some conditional work in here later on. I'm also going to add outline up here, and that's going to default to false. Okay, so we've got two elements here. Two elements are gonna take two different styles. Uh, we're going to have our container styles, which will just be an empty array right now. Then we'll have our text styles, which will also be an empty array. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new styles object. So I'll say const styles is equal to stylesheet.create. We're going to have a container. We're going to have a container outline. We're going to have text and then we'll have text outline. 
and that'll just kind of align with the different styling we've got. So looking here, uh, we can actually go ahead and start using these. Basically, by default, we're not going to have that outline style. So this container styles is just going to be styles dot container. And then our text is just going to be the styles dot uh, text. We can apply these by saying on the touchable opacity, style is equal to container styles. And then on text, we can say style is equal to text styles. All right, now with that, let's actually start doing some styling work so we can start seeing some results. Um, this is going to have a background color of colors.primary. We're going to have a padding vertical of 14, border radius of six, border width of one, border color of colors dot primary. And then we're going to add a margin vertical of seven. Uh, the reason I'm adding that margin vertical is basically we'll assume that this button is going to show up underneath form fields. So we don't want it to sit right on those form fields. All right, so we've got this. We can see we can tap it. Now we can do the text next. We'll give it a color of colors dot white. We'll align self center. We'll give it a font size of 18 and then a font weight of 500. All right, so we've got this button. Looks good. Uh, looks right to me. So now uh, what can we do? Well, looking at our stories, we can go and check out the other case, this outline version, and we can see as I switch to it, it's not doing anything different because we haven't set up those styles. So all I'm going to do is select the outline version of this, which means we'll be using this story, which has the outline prop. So we can say if outline, so it's either going to be true or false. Uh, if it is outline, we can say container styles dot push styles dot container outline. And then text styles, we can say dot push styles dot text outline. So in this case, uh, we know all we want is the outline of the text uh, when, or rather the outline of the border when we do have an outline uh, prop pass to it. So all I'm going to do, um, basically the padding is going to say the same border radius, border width, all that's going to change. All I need to do here is say the background color is going to be transparent. And then the border color, we're actually not going to use this border color. We're going to use a slightly different one. We're going to go ahead and say colors.border. For the text, all we're going to do is instead of uh, the text color being white, we'll say the color is going to be colors.primary. And here we've got that button. Same functionality. If we look over at our storybook server, we can see we're tapping the outline. If we switch over to that, uh, we've got that we're tapping the default. And basically this is how we can go ahead and build a really basic component in this case. Uh, or we could go ahead and start building more and more complex ones, which we'll be doing later on. And you can see what, what I really like about stories is this makes defining the props on a, pro, on a component really, really clear. I know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And then it also basically writes documentation for how to use that component for yourself uh, now and in the future. And we can do all kinds of other cool stuff with these stories, as we'll see later on. Um, I just find that this perfect world of uh, documentation, ease of development, and then just ease of sharing everything you've got with that component by using a storybook. And if you've been following along or if you're going to do this on your own, you've written your first story and we've got our component library starting to build up.